So can we do it on Jupyter notebook or something? Because every time I write it on shell, I have to save each and every you know code in different different books. Oh, okay. Uh, so what uh, the reason that I choose this is because uh, you know most of the students do not have Jupyter notebook, so this is compatible for everything. So that's the reason I choose this. Okay, if you want to work on Jupyter or something else, so we can work on that. Jupyter or IPython or it something is, like that. Yeah, because every time I open it, I have to save it in a different different file. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. We can work on that. So from the next class. I don't have it installed in my PC right now, so from the next class onwards, I'll get that installed. Okay. Sure. It's giving me syntax errors. Okay. Let me see. So, uh, so one is thing that I see directly is you have written for for. So uh, this will be from. Okay. Okay. And uh, after that, uh, so uh, uh, you have you are not taking any input, right? So we had to take an input. Remember, so how many numbers to print out or how many digits of the sequence you have to print out so I need to take an input so let for example let us start from whatever you have so for example if I want to take an input let that input be uh, INP okay so my input will be an integer right because okay. I want to take the number of digits I need to print so it will be an integer now integer and then you know how to take the input right raw underscore input then you whatever message you want to show then what we are going to do is so here you have only printed three digits that's because you are not running a loop so what we need is a loop, right? So so that uh, everything can be flexible. So it can, if I enter 10, it will run 10 times and so on, right? So we had learned for loop yesterday. So for, yeah. I will use it. So for i uh, is equal to, uh, sorry, i in range uh, range will be you know uh, your input so the reason I take INP as a range you remember we discussed uh, what a, what a range it means right yeah so if I say if I, my input is uh, you know uh, 10 then range 10 will uh, give me all the integers from 0 to 9 right oh, okay So it will basically give me 10 numbers. So the loop will run for 10 times, right? Got it? Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, now uh, what I'm going to do is the first two digits of uh, Fibonacci uh, series is um, are basically 1 and 1, right? So what yeah. I'm going to do is I'm only going to initiate two uh, variables one is last equal to one and then other is second last okay okay now what i'm Why going to do is uh, second underscore last I can write second last as well. So see, if you when you name a variable, you cannot give space within the name, right? So either you have to write a C C O N D then L L A S T whatever. Oh, okay. So that becomes uh, difficult to read, right? So okay. usually in the coding convention, what happens is when you want to give two word names, you use a 
uh, underscore as instead of a space. So okay. that's the reason I uh, have used underscore. Okay. So let this be second last and last. Now, uh, you know, when I click enter, you see the indentation automatically happens. Okay. So mm -hmm. now what you have to do is, for the first two digits, we have to forcefully output one. After that, it's always the sum of last two digits, right? Okay. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to write if i is equal to zero, because you remember in the range, it will start from zero. zero. So zero i equal to zero basically means the first uh, number or the first a term in the series okay if i equal yeah. to zero then what i'm going to print is print i'm going to print last last is nothing but one okay okay now i'm going to use else if i is equal to one which is the second digit i am going to print my indentation, after, my indentation after print is starting just below the print. It's not starting, you know, below it. This indentation? Above this. this see, if, if, if is also, uh, you know, a conditional statement, uh, right? No. So whenever after, you write... I mean, the indentation from else. I mean, below this print, where your cursor is, below that. The else if indentation. Yeah, yes. this one is starting just below the above print command. I know it will start because the computer does not recommend know that you are you are going to give an else if condition. What it understands is you are continuing with the if condition. So whenever that happens, you have to manually go back and uh, a tab and then start right with the right thing because the computer does not know what you are trying to do. Right? It uh, it assumes that you are continuing with the if block. Okay. So here also when I uh, play, press enter, you see it comes before, uh, below the print, but if you pay, press uh, backspace, it will go back. So okay. I have now, I have taken care of first two digits, right, or the first two terms. Then what I have to do is, for a rest of the terms, it is basically sum of the last two numbers, right. Hmm. So else, else what uh, will happen is I will print okay. uh, no, let me you know I'll use create a variable term which is sum of last last so I create this term now what I'm going to do is before printing this or whatever I can print this as well Below but L now my term is equal to last plus second last. So after the first two uh, terms, the third term onwards, it's the sum of last two, right? So that's what I've written, last plus second last. Okay, now I'll print the term. Okay, now as soon as I print the term, the, I, I need to store the current because in the next loop, the current term will be the last term, right? And the second last term will be the second last term, right? Okay. So what I'll do is I'll store term value in last term and sorry, I'll store now I'm I'm done. One sec, you have written second last equals to last and then you have written last equals to term, right? Yes. Okay. So you understand what I, why I am doing that? Because, see, when I am, I see, I have printed the current term, right? Suppose yeah. I, I have, if I run this, I have printed, uh, I say my input is uh, five terms, okay? I need the first five terms. 
now when the loop starts the loop will, i will vary between 0 to 4 right 4 so when i equal to 0 it will print 1 because last is 1 okay. when then next when i equal to 1 it will again print last which is 1 okay okay now when i is equal to 2 none of these above conditions are valid right so it will come to this okay hmm now what it will what will happen is term is equal to last plus second last which is 1 plus 1 mm -hmm. and i will print out 2 okay okay now what will happen is now if you think about it now the series will look say now the series will look something like this 1 1 mm -hmm. and 2 right mm -hmm. now what i need to do is when i am printing this one which is 3 i need to take a sum of 2 and 1 right which is nothing mm. but the last and the second last number so as you go ahead printing it you after printing your current number becomes the last number and the last mm. number becomes the second last number right mm. so that's what i, I have done here and you understand right okay quite clear now if i yeah so now i if i print this if i say one the first six digits it will give me the first six digits now just try and replicate the same thing on your end okay don't do not see my code try and replicate the same thing on your system i have given the number of inputs as 9 Okay. And my series got print till thirty four. Nine. You have written nine. So let me see if I give nine. Let's see what happens. It's printing till thirty four. It's printing till thirty four. So all the nine digit nine numbers have come right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. That's fine, right? So you need first nine terms of the series. So nine terms are these. 